American popular culture is steadily being inundated with pro-LGBTQ messages. Marvel is pushing an on-screen same-sex kiss in a movie out next fall. HGTV has announced it plans to feature a thruple in its House Hunter series. That show will feature a married man and a woman who have two kids and are in a relationship with another woman who lives with them. And then there's AOC. The New York Congresswoman recently pledged allegiance to the drag on RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars show. I'm Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and I pledge allegiance to the drag. Here to set us straight on these cultural influences from the LGBTQ community is George Carneal. Raised by a Southern Baptist minister, Mr. Corneal spent 25 years immersed in the homosexual lifestyle. He is author of the new book, From Queer to Christ, My Journey into the Light. So, George, tell us, why is this onslaught from the LGBTQ community occurring in our culture at this time? It seems they've gone from fighting for societal tolerance to indoctrination, demanding that uh, our culture embrace a minority lifestyle. I think it's going to continue to get worse. I knew when they opened the floodgates, it's never going to be enough really until we look at the bigger picture of what the agenda is really about. And that is silencing Christians and all opposition to this agenda and anything that is pro-family, pro-Christian, pro-life, pro-America. Uh, it's just an agenda that's going to keep going until they can silence everyone. Well, ex explain to us then, how is it that you uh, raised by a Southern Baptist minister, a father, uh, came to embrace a gay lifestyle. Well, my journey was, uh, I really struggled with a lot of um, bullying when I was a kid. There was a disconnect with my male peers, and because of the demands of my father's ministry, and he wasn't around a lot, I think there was something in me that was missing male affection and male bonding. So when I first, and I went through a lot of bullying, so when I first stepped into a gay bar at 18, it was the first time that men were looking at me differently and treating me differently. I wasn't getting the negative attention, but it was a positive attention. And it really became addicting because for someone who really didn't have that for 18 years of their life, uh, I just qu quickly became addicted to that life and it just descended within three years. Uh, by that point, I was already battling drugs and alcohol, depression. I had a sex addiction. I was a prostitute, and I attempted suicide, and it would still be 22 more years before God would finally get me out of that life. There's a growing effort in states around the nation right now to adopt legislation prohibiting counseling that attempts to bring gays and lesbians out of the homosexual lifestyle. Your thoughts on that? Should we have laws banning conversion therapy? Absolutely not. The way they tell it, they they act as if every counselor out there is doing harm to an LGBT individual, and it's not the case. I have worked with both secular and Christian counselors, and everyone has been respectful of my journey, what I've been struggling with, even my faith. I have not had anyone harm me, and I've been through lots of therapy with lots of therapists. What they need to understand is there are LGBT individuals who do not want these feelings, and they want help getting that healing and wholeness that they want so they can have a family and children that is their desire and they have every right to seek out whatever kind of counseling they need to get that healing and wholeness the lgbt activists and even government the government does not have the right to step in and mandate and dictate that we have to be saddled with these feelings and i'm sure just like you many gays george uh, you at one time uh, viewed christians as intolerant enemies so how should churches and Christians respond then to gay members in their congregations? For me, I really hated Christians. I had such a, a, a negative view of them, and I had really been hurt by them because a lot of them give the narrative that God created AIDS to kill the fags. God k destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah to get rid of the homosexuals. You hear all, hear all of the perverted stuff, and then they'll say uh, all fags are going to hell. And this really stole any hope that I had in my own life of trying to to, to think or believe that God was really an ally. And it was really God slowly immersing me back into the church, but with Christians who truly had the heart of Christ that allowed me a safe place to go and just sit with them. And I wasn't harassed or bullied or mistreated, but it was sitting under the power of the conviction of the Holy Spirit, of pastors who had the guts to speak the truth of God's word. And I knew that by the Christians in my own life who were loving, and who invested time in me and poured love into me, that really gave me a lot of food for thought. And God started to expose the lies of the LGBT activists, including the liberal theologians who pushed the gay is okay narrative. 
And after I had to work through the lies and God deprogrammed me of those lies and gave me the healing that I needed, gave me the strength to walk out of that life. The Episcopal Church just ordained its first lesbian bishop, Bonnie Perry. Should people who are openly homosexual be in leadership positions in churches? Absolutely not. And that goes for heterosexuals who are sleeping outside of marriage or they're living with someone and they're unmarried. No, there is a godly, there's a way that we are supposed to live our lives that God calls us to do in his word. And unless we are meeting those standards, not that anyone's perfect, but we should really be really be doing our best to live a godly life because we are an influence on others. And not only that, we are representing God. So no, they should not be allowed. And finally, George, how should Christians then respond to these LGBTQ influences that we're now seeing in movies, films, politics, culture? What's your advice? My advice is, is I know Hollywood is glamorizing it and they are getting, giving a sanitized version of what homosexuality is. But until you sit down and listen to the testimonies of every gay, lesbian, and transgender individual who has come out of that life, and you listen to the horror stories of what we've been through and the reality of that life, which I share in my book, it's not X-rated, but I don't sugarcoat it. But the life is so different from what Hollywood and what the media portray. And so when a Christian affirms this, they think that they're doing the most loving thing, but you're not. You're not only hurting that individual, and you're pushing them into a life of where they're not going to find any peace, happiness, or contentment, but they are. you are pushing them into further rebellion against God. And I've seen the casualties of that life. And I'm warning Christians to stop affirming this. Tell them the truth in love. And just so you'll know, in the back of my book, I put all of the talking points that the LGBT activists and the Christian liberal theologians use. And I debunk that with scripture. So if you have individuals who in your life who are not willing to listen to this, give them the book or at least get it and familiarize yourself with those talking points. So when they do come at you and say, no, 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 it's okay you can give them scripture because they are not going to sit down and study God's word to get the truth for themselves. Okay, the book is From Queer to Christ, My Journey into the Light. George Carneal, thank you for sharing your time and insights. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on the show.